Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's topics include the latest Diablo news leading into BlizzCon 2018, EA on the warpath to fight Belgium's new loot box regulations, Europe voting to basically ruin the internet with new copyright legislation, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description if you'd like to skip ahead. And as we dive into things, make sure to have rang the sub notification bell to be alerted of new Saturday episodes. First off, I'll quickly mention that Shadow of the Tomb Raider has released this week. I've been playing it a bit on stream. I'm really enjoying it. It's got some fun puzzles. It's got great platforming or traversals, excellent acting, good story, and it even has a photo mode. But onto some terrible news. As reported by The Verge, the European Parliament has voted in favor of the Copyright Directive, which is a piece of legislation that could effectively kill memes in Europe. So there are two key articles brought up in this legislation. There's Article 11, which is dubbed the Link Tax by critics, is effectively intended to give publishers a way to make money whenever their stories are linked somewhere, such as on Google. So Google would need to basically pay a license fee in order to link to their story. That sounds like a great idea. I mean, it would almost make more sense for Google to charge companies to be featured in their search engine than the other way around. I mean, it would be evil, but it would make more sense. Pay us a fee to get your site bumped up in search results. But no, no, Google has to pay for the privilege of linking to their story, to their site. And then we have Article 13, which is dubbed the Upload Filter by critics, and this is the real killer. This legislation would require that platforms like YouTube, like Facebook, anything that has users that are able to upload content, that the platforms would have to effectively stop copyrighted content from being uploaded in the first place. Not just taken down, but basically, you know, some form of upload filter where it has to be approved before it could even be posted. I mean, already YouTube's automated copyright system is a clusterfuck, but it's trying to do the best job it can do. There's a lot of automation. There's just so much content. And while the system is already pretty bad for a lot of content creators, think of how much worse it would be with this legislation. Imagine you want to post a meme on Facebook and then, oh, denied because this image is copyrighted because it's a still from a movie. Like it's one thing to stop people from using copyrighted content for profit, but just in forums, on Facebook, on Twitter? Plus, imagine the burden that puts on platforms to scan and filter all content. This is an incredible burden on the platform, and for smaller ones that can't afford it, it would be easier to just disable the ability to upload images or upload anything. Now, the only bit of good news here, or the silver lining, is that while this legislation has been approved, there will be a final vote in January. This will take place in the European Parliament. It's possible that this may be rejected in the final vote, but without a significant uproar, it's unlikely. But once it passes, once it's accepted, it'll be up to every individual EU country to determine how they implement these measures. Now, obviously, the intent behind this legislation is to protect copyright holders. I think it's pretty fair to say that on the internet, it's still, while more regulated than in the past, a degree of the wild, wild west. And there are people that do legitimately have their content stolen. This legislation is seeking to make it such that people are paid when their copyrighted material is used. However, what's more likely to happen here? Do you really see big mega corporations like Google caving to this? Or would these megacorps just block their services in the affected countries? I mean, imagine what would happen if Google would abruptly just stop all of its services in Europe. YouTube, the Google search engine, obviously, Gmail, Google Docs, all suddenly inaccessible throughout the entirety of And this sort of happened in Germany. In 2014, Germany passed regulations to prevent Google News from showing stories from German publishers unless Google paid them, basically. Or unless the publishers explicitly permitted Google to do it for free. What happened? Google did not pay them. And they just stopped linking German publishers in their search results. And after disastrous drops in traffic, many of the big German publishers decided 
that they had made a terrible mistake and opted in to allow Google to run their stories for free. So, who knows what's going to happen at this point, but it's entirely possible that the future for our European folks out there is going to be VPNs. Alright, on to the latest in the loot box drama, which was started by EA back late 2017 with Star Wars Battlefront. Well, the latest is that EA is aiming to head to court to defend its loot boxes against the Belgian Gambling Commission. To get you folks caught up on the story so far, Belgium has laws that revolve around regulating gambling. Some of these laws include needing a gambling license. Others include preventing minors from being able to access the gambling portion of a game. And recently, Belgium has ruled that paid loot boxes in video games are a form of gambling and thus fall under gambling laws. So Belgium told game devs, hey, you gotta either remove your paid loot boxes from your games here, or you're gonna have to comply with our gambling laws. And some companies have complied. We've seen companies disable the ability to purchase loot boxes in Belgium because they don't want to have to get a gambling license. They don't want to have to make their games age restricted against minors. However, EA doesn't believe that its form of loot boxes are actually loot boxes and thus are not gambling. We're specifically talking about their latest FIFA game. So EA is not removing the loot boxes and is not doing anything else to further comply with Belgium's gambling laws. EA understands that this means it's going to be headed to a court case and they're hoping to win. So the Belgian Gambling Commission has officially opened a case now on the matter and it seems it most likely will be proceeding to court. Now you might ask why is EA fighting this? Why not just comply like the other companies? Belgium is just one country after all and the amount of revenue that they would lose from disabling loot boxes in one country is probably going to be a lot less than the fines that they're bound to incur if they lose in court. Well, it all comes down to the precedent. They want to win now so that they don't lose in the long run, if and when all of Europe decides to side with Belgium. If EA complies and they are conceding that their loot boxes are gambling and they don't want to make that concession. But what do you folks think? Do you think that EA will win or lose in court? Sound off in the comments. On to some Diablo news. Starting with Diablo 3 news, the theme for Season 15 has been revealed and it's basically double bounty caches for completing bounties. Season 15 starts next Friday, September 21st. And we've got our updated tier list and top 10 builds for the season. Be sure to check that out. In other Diablo news, 10 pages from the Book of Adria have been leaked or have mysteriously appeared on some Amazon listings. Curiously enough, not on the American Amazon listing, but you can find it in Amazon France. It's still the English pages though. So we get these 10 gorgeous pages filled with lore on monsters from throughout the entirety of the Diablo franchise. And it's all written in the voice of Adria the Witch. The 10 pages we got as a preview here include Kazra, aka the Goatman, spiders, and I like that the lore explains why spiders became giant. We got the Butcher, who looks like Diablo 3's Butcher, also the Heroes of the Storm Butcher. But we got some new lore on the Butcher. The Butcher's gone through a few lore revisions. The latest retcon here feels more like the original Butcher. To me, it makes him even more frightening. I do like this latest lore on him. We also have entries for Hellions and Shadow Vermin and Treasure Goblins. And overall, this kind of feels to me like a Dungeons and Dragons monster manual, minus the stat blocks. And it's interesting that Adria writes a lot about crafting reagents that can be gathered from these creatures, or otherwise how to summon these creatures with different reagents. It's most likely that this was just put in for flavor, but it does make me wonder, is this maybe hinting at crafting being a more important part of a future Diablo game? That's just wild speculation, though. Now, the release date for the Book of Adria on Amazon.com is listed as October 15th, but for Amazon.ca, for us Canadians, it's October 25th. For Amazon France, it's November 1st, so it looks like you Americans are the lucky ones and get it first. In other Diablo news, we had the first of the BlizzCon 2018 virtual ticket goodies revealed, and it is a Demon Hunter skin for Sombra in Overwatch. This skin was also leaked shortly before the actual reveal. 
But what's most interesting here is that for Overwatch, the previous BlizzCon skins have been BlizzCon themed. We have 2016's Bastion and 2017's Winston here. So this is a big departure to have a specifically Diablo themed skin as a virtual goodie for Overwatch. And it kind of begs the question, does that mean that this BlizzCon is going to be really Diablo themed? Now we should mention that in the fine print it says that the Sombra Demon Hunter skin will also be available to acquire somehow in 2019. So getting the BlizzCon virtual ticket or an actual BlizzCon ticket basically gives you early access to the Demon Hunter Sombra skin. It's also mentioned that there will be in-game goodies for BlizzCon for World of Warcraft, StarCraft 2, StarCraft Remastered, Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone, and Diablo 3. So they're still doing their yearly Diablo 3 cosmetic as a BlizzCon goodie. And further along the lines of BlizzCon 2018, we do see that this new key art depicts Diablo, and it's not a super familiar Diablo. It's definitely not Diablo 3's Diablo. It's an older Diablo. But notice that instead of a soul stone, he just has a horn. In Diablo 2, he had the soul stone. Arguably in Diablo 1, it's kind of debated there that whether the soul stone was covered in skin or flesh or something. But in Diablo 1, he had those very characteristic armbands. So what's going on here? Is this just artistic license or are they trying to tease that this is a Diablo, either from Diablo 1 or maybe even from before, some kind of a prequel Diablo. Now that said, we can't read too much into this because we've previously had Diablo-related art at BlizzCon that did not amount to anything such as this demonic-looking crusader that some of us thought, oh, this is a hint at some kind of corrupted crusader, and it didn't pan out to be anything. However, the BlizzCon 2018 goodie bag has been unboxed in this article by in Venn Global, we see all the goodies that we get for the goodie bag, and that includes a Heroes of the Storm Raven Lord Magnet, Hearthstone Magnets, an Overwatch Coin, a World of Warcraft Keychain, a Starcraft Pin, and for Diablo, an actual Diablo figurine. Now maybe I'm just biased here, but I think Diablo gets the coolest goodie this year. And note the white horn. The armbands. This is Diablo 1 Diablo. Now, does this hint at a remaster or anything like that? Not necessarily. It could be, but it could also very well not be. It's just something commemorative for Diablo. In other Diablo news, we got the official release date for Diablo 3 on Nintendo Switch. It is officially going to be November 2nd, which confirms the target leak that we covered last week or the week before. So that is the first day of BlizzCon. As for our weekly update on Diablo job postings, we do see some activity this week. The entry for lead technical artist has gone down and a new position, senior technical artist, has emerged. So is it just a renaming maybe of the position? Perhaps, but we also saw two other completely new positions, senior visual effects artist and senior sound designer. And that's going to wrap up this week's video, but be sure to have checked out last week's video where we talked about the new Diablo game that was allegedly confirmed. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider becoming a royal waiter on Patreon where your support is immensely appreciated. We've got a variety of back rewards, including behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.